Excellent. So I'm going to skip right past the title page. Uh, so again, welcome to the Francophone and French Teacher Recruitment and Retention Webinar. I sincerely appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your, I'm sure, very, very hectic schedules with uh, school winding down for the school year. Um, so really, really appreciate you taking the time to be here today to have this conversation with us. So today we're going to start by uh, looking back at some of the main findings that came out of the December 2018 stakeholder conversations that we had at Government House. This was when the federal government first announced their plan to launch calls for proposals for teacher recruitment and retention, um, and we call it TRR for short. We will then provide an opportunity for school authorities who have received federal TRR funding, and I apologize, it's not just school authorities, it's also post-secondary institutions, um, who have received federal TRR funding to share with us details about their projects and how things are going. This will be a chance for participants to find out more about what's happening in the province to assist with the Francophone and French teacher shortage and to ask any questions that you may have of those project um, organizers. Next, we will delve into some small group discussions where we'll take a closer look at where we are now with TRR in the province and how we might move forward considering how things have changed since 2018 and the project work that has been taking place since that time. We're looking forward to hearing from you about what the situation is in the field and how we might move forward with the TRR strategy. We will use the information you shared during discussions to inform a strategic framework that is in development for TRR in the province and to revise priority areas for upcoming TRR calls for proposals from the federal government. Uh, as you've already been advised, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the OLEP webpage in the coming days. Um, and just one last note before we move forward is that we do know there will be another call for proposals. However, the federal government has not yet advised when that will be released, um, but we will notify as soon as we hear something. So let's get right into today's discussions. So as mentioned, first we're gonna take a look back at the discussions we had a few years ago around Francophone and French teacher recruitment and retention. In December 2018, Alberta Education engaged with Francophone and French second language stakeholders to discuss the current situation in Alberta, how we arrived here to share concerns, opinions, and information on how Alberta can collaborate to address the shortage of Francophone and French speaking teachers throughout the province. These engagement sessions identified the following priority areas for immediate collaborative effort, international recruitment, homegrown teachers, increased training spaces, communities of practice, and supply and demand. In follow-up to the December consultations, we hosted a webinar to provide an overview of what we heard and a platform for Q&A. Francophone and FSL stakeholders, including school authorities, post-secondary institutions, and educational associations and organizations, were then invited to submit to Alberta Education um, their projects specific collaborative projects that met one or more of the five priority areas identified for immediate province-wide action. For the first call for proposals made by the federal government in 2019, Alberta Education received 29 applications from educational partners across the province. The department put forward all applications received and three were approved by the federal government. Since then, the federal government launched a call for proposals for COVID TRR projects in June of 2020 and another call in November of 2020. In total, we have received federal approval on a total of six TRR projects. The funding recipients of these TRR projects have prepared short videos on what their project is about and how things are going. After all the videos, we will have a couple of minutes for questions about the projects. So let's dive into the first video. This is the Increased Training Space Project, Growing Capacity to Meet Teacher Demand uh, by Campus St. Jean.
Peuple Saint-Jean est fier d'avoir reçu des fonds pour le programme Espace de formation accroître la capacité de répondre aux besoins d'enseignants. La pénurie d'enseignants partout au Canada nous a amené à développer l'idée d'avoir des campus satellites à Calgary, Red Deer et Grand Prairie pour répondre aux besoins du sud de la province, le centre de la province et le nord de la province. Nous avons, nous avons établi des partenariats avec Red Deer College et Grand Prairie pour nous aider à répondre à ces besoins. Julia Raum, and I'm the Associate Dean in the School of Education at Red Deer College. Avant de venir à Red Deer College, j'enseigne en immersion et je sais que c'est difficile pour les commissions scolaires de la région de trouver et retenir des enseignants qualifiés qui parlent français. I was therefore very pleased to work with Campus Saint-Jean to provide a pathway for students from our region to begin their studies toward a Bachelor of Education degree at RDC while having access to courses in French at Campus Saint-Jean. Le campus satellite à Red Deer est une excellente occasion pour les finissants de la région de continuer leurs études en français sans avoir à déménager. The intent is that they will be able to do their practicum in the region and eventually get hired to teach. Ce projet a beaucoup de potentiel à adresser nos défis de recrutement dans la région de Red Deer. Les objectifs de notre programme cette année pour 21-22 sont d'obtenir une cohorte au BED de 4 ans et une cohorte au BED AD. Les nombres en ce moment sont très élevés au niveau du BED AD et le fait qu'on a pu ouvrir nos inscriptions très tard au mois de février ont fait qu'on n'a pas, qu pas eu autant d'étudiants intéressés au niveau du BED pour cette année. Nous allons vraiment euh, mettre une emphase pour le programme de 2022-23. For Campus Saint-Jean to be successful in such an endeavor, for Grand Prairie, Red Deer and Calgary to establish themselves in a sustainable manner, I believe that an extension or three more years of funding would really make a difference, maybe even two more years, to give us a chance to be part of the community in those three regions. Thank you. have to remember to unmute myself, sorry about that. Next, we will watch a video from Edmonton Public on supporting Francophone and French second language teachers in a hybrid learning environment. Under the teacher recruitment and retention strategy in minority French language schools and in French immersion and second language programs, Isley and Edmonton Public Schools looks forward to its initiative for the 2021-2022 school year. The Institute for Innovation in Second Language Education is leading the project with a focus on the development and adaptation of re-entry resources for French Immersion and French as a Second Language programs. In March 2020, teachers and students experienced a new reality when directed to pivot from face-to-face -face teaching and learning to an online context. In September 2020, families chose online or in-person schooling, and the 2020-21 school year saw learning disrupted, with many schools going back and forth between in-person and online contexts. For French as a second language and French immersion programs, this meant increased complexities of providing quality immersion and second language education online and in the various blended contexts. The project presented by Edmonton Public Schools aims to develop and adapt new digital and print teaching and learning resources for teachers and parents to support them in a face-to-face -face and in a synchronous online learning environment based on priority learning outcomes. These resources will be designed to seamlessly support teachers and students in the transition back to in-person language programs. 
The main activities to support the project are the hiring of a French as a second language and a French immersion lead consultant to develop instructional frameworks and templates and to identify priority learning outcomes for each grade of the prospective programs from kindergarten to grade nine. The consultants will work alongside teachers to adapt, develop and build resource packages to support teachers and students in providing continuum of language learning. Feedback by teachers accessing the resources will be sought throughout the school year to assess, evaluate, and adjust learning packages. Resource development will include lessons, videos, supporting materials, and assessment tools. The project targets are a minimum of 300 resource packages developed and classroom validated for core subjects from kindergarten to grade nine for the Alberta French immersion context a minimum of 200 resource packages developed and classroom validated for French language arts, a minimum of 120 resource packages developed and classroom validated to support grades four to nine French as a second language nine-year programs, and a minimum of 80% of French immersion and French as a second language teachers satisfied with the validation drafts of the resource packages. Our performance indicators are the number of resource packages developed, adapted, and validated and the percentage of French immersion and French as a second language teachers satisfied with the resource packages. Our expected results are that Edmonton Public Schools have resources to ensure the continuity of student learning in French programs and the support to strengthen teacher retention during the challenging times presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. The quality of French as a second language and French immersion education is maintained and resources developed endure and successfully build foundations for future French language programs. And next, uh, teacher retention and recruitment in French immersion and FSL from Workland. Bonjour, je m'appelle Sylvie Roy. Je suis professeur au Workland School of Education. I oversee the project Teacher Retention and Recruitment with my colleagues from Workland School of Education who are part of the French Advisory Committee at the University of Calgary. So this project has two initiatives. The first one is to collect data with a survey, with interviews with teachers of the satisfaction of the teachers in Alberta who are teaching French. We are talking here French immersion and French as second language uh, courses. So our programs is really focusing on second language uh, teaching of French. The second initiative is that we want to recruit more teachers for French in Alberta because the goal of this particular project is to have more teachers. We need more teachers in Alberta for French. So uh, the second initiative is really to recruit teachers, but also to retain those that already are in teaching French and might need some professional development uh, in order to, to, um, to improve or improve their, their language or even the pedagogical uh, approaches. Just to give you a little context, in Workland School of Education, we are preparing teachers for French for over 20 years. We also have some professional development courses that we would like to actually uh, offer to the teachers out there. Ce qui nous distingue des autres facultés d'éducation en Alberta, c'est que nous sommes experts avec nos cours en ligne et nous pouvons offrir des cours pour les futurs enseignants de français en ligne dans les communautés éloignées, c'est-à-dire pas en ville, pas à Calgary ou à Edmonton, mais à l'extérieur. Donc, tous ceux qui aimeraient devenir enseignants de français peuvent prendre ces cours. Euh, C'est un programme qui s'appelle Community Base. Donc, nos cours sont en ligne pour ce programme euh, spécifiquement. En ce qui concerne le développement professionnel, on s'aperçoit que les enseignants aimeraient avoir des cours, pas nécessairement aller faire une maîtrise, mais vraiment prendre un cours euh, sur la pédagogie des langues secondes, un cours de comment on enseigne, comment on évalue en français. Donc, ça aussi, c'est quelque chose qu'on veut faire pour retenir les, les enseignants dans nos classes de français ou en immersion, mais aussi pour recruter des nouveaux enseignants. Une chose qu'on aimerait faire aussi, c'est qu'il y a beaucoup de gens qui parlent français ou qui ont déjà de l'expérience en enseignement. Donc, ce, cette, ces personnes-là, qu'ils soient bilingues ou multilingues, 
ont euh, la chance de venir dans notre programme. Nous offrons aussi des bourses pour nos étudiants pour qu'ils puissent aller euh, perfectionner leur langue quand ils en ont besoin. So, through collaborating with our partners, we really work with the school boards, French associations, our communities. We really want to work with them to find a way to have more teachers in French, but also to retain those we have. By implementing this project, the Workland School of Education will be well situated to recruit, retain, and prepare potential teachers for French immersion in French as a second language. Merci beaucoup. I will now turn it over to Anne-Marie Boucher from the FCSFA to share a little bit about the teacher recruitment and retention project for minority language education. Anne-Marie? Thanks, Gina. So our project is aimed at both the recruitment of new teachers and also at the retention of teachers in Francophone schools. So as you know, um, the, uh, the turnover of, um, of teachers has been uh, increasing and um, it's, it's really, um, it's alarming for French uh, language school boards as the pool for potential French teachers is already limited. Um, currently, each of the, four, of the four French language school boards engage in recruitment practices on their own, uh, mostly because of the lack of financial resources to coordinate a common approach. In addition, strategies that promote the teaching profession in French language schools are pr practically non-existent. So this project is under, uh, it will be coordinated by the Fédération des Conseils scolaires francophones de l'Alberta and proposes a twofold approach to recruitment and retention of French language teachers. Um, the first component consists of consolidating the resources of the four uh, French language school boards in order to promote French language education and recruit teachers. And uh, the second one is uh, about the mentorship and empowerment of a teacher. Um, the uh, Conseil scolaire Franco-Sud is um, the, the main school board that will be uh, managing this project. So for the first one, for, um, in, in order to consolidate the resources, uh, in order to recruit more teachers, um, two recruiters will be uh, hired. And this project um, just started uh, in April. So we're really just in the first uh, phase of the, the project. So we'll hire two recruiters. And then what we wanna do is develop an evaluation tool uh, to be able to uh, monitor the results of attending the different uh, job fairs. We wanna develop a complete profile of compet competencies needed in future teachers. Uh, we want to develop a provincial pre-screening French interview guide that would be used to pre-select uh, potential teachers. Um, we will coordinate a prov province-wide advertising campaign in Francophone schools to raise high school students' awareness of the teaching profession by using uh, career guidance strategies. Um, we want to develop some uh, promotional material uh, focusing on the teaching profession. And we want to develop and offer a common orientation program in French for beginning teachers focused on teaching in a minority setting. The second component um, talks about mentorship and teacher empowerment. Um, so we want to develop French guidelines for welcoming work environment in a francophone minority settings, develop a two year shared responsibility school mentorship program develop and implement a survey of the new teachers and develop tools for new teachers. The expected results, um, so the teaching profession is promoted at a provincial level and more, more particularly among high school uh, students. New teachers in Francophone schools are confident and have the skills to teach in a minority setting. French language school boards have data on the impact of recruitment efforts at job fairs and in faculties of education. And the teacher turnover rate in, in Francophone school is 5% per year. 
And to do this, um, those are the, uh, the contribution of the uh, federal government and the provincial contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Emery. We will switch now back to just a few more videos. The next one is enhancing the education program at Campus Saint Jean. J'aimerais vous parler de trois projets que nous avons pu réaliser grâce à la subvention obtenue du, du fédéral pour renforcer la formation de nos étudiants au campus Saint-Jean. Commençons par le projet micro-formation et badge numérique. Pour enrichir la formation de nos étudiants, nous avons invité des personnes du terrain des écoles pour offrir 15 micro-formations regroupées autour de trois grandes thématiques. La première thématique a porté sur la préparation au stage. Nos étudiants ont eu la chance de participer à des, des ateliers qui les ont mieux outillés dans les domaines suivants. Les relations avec les élèves, l'organisation de la salle de classe, la création de mini-leçons pour évaluer les apprentissages à distance, la communication interculturelle. La deuxième thématique a touché à l'inclusion et au bien-être. Grâce à nos invités dynamiques et passionnés, les étudiants ont appris à gérer le travail de groupe, à établir un climat de classe inclusif, à prendre soin de leur santé mentale et à passer à travers leur première année d'enseignement sans trop de stress. La troisième thématique a touché à l'enseignement en ligne hybride. Les étudiants ont participé à des ateliers sur les différentes plateformes numériques et ont appris à utiliser une panoplie d'outils pour favoriser l'engagement des élèves dans un contexte d'apprentissage en ligne. Et ceux et celles qui ont participé aux cinq formations d'une même thématique ont reçu un badge numérique qu'ils ont pu inclure dans leur portfolio de développement professionnel. Écoutons à ce sujet le témoignage d'Assetou Kong. Grâce aux micro-formations sur les thématiques de la technologie, telles que l'apprentissage actif des élèves en classe présentielle et hybride, et aussi l'animation des différents types de classes virtuelles, j'ai compris les notions asynchrone, synchrone et hybride, et j'ai appris aussi à mieux gérer mes cours en ligne. Le deuxième projet a été celui de la co-planification. Certains de nos professeurs-chercheurs ont développé des cours en collaboration avec des personnes du terrain. Écoutons à ce sujet le témoignage de Marianne Jacquet, professeure spécialiste des questions liées aux enjeux de la diversité. La collaboration avec des enseignants pour le développement du cours et du S101 est une expérience innovante et enrichissante. Innovante parce que les enseignants sont pleinement engagés dans la co-construction d'un cours universitaire, ce qui n'est pas habituel, et enrichissante parce que cette collaboration permet d'ancrer l'approche interculturelle et réflexive qui est privilégiée dans ce cours en s'appuyant à la fois sur leur grande expertise professionnelle en contexte scolaire francophone et immersif, et également sur leur connaissance personnelle en tant qu'enseignante issue de l'immigration et de minorités visibles. En somme, cette collaboration permet de répondre au plus près aux attentes du milieu scolaire et aux besoins et défis rencontrés par les étudiants immigrants et de minorités visibles qui doivent s'adapter à une culture éducative très différente de celle dans laquelle ils ont été scolarisés dans leur pays d'origine. Le troisième projet a été celui du co-enseignement. D'autres professeurs ont décidé de se lancer dans l'aventure du co-enseignement. Ce fut le cas de Samira Elatia dans le cadre de son cours sur l'évaluation des apprentissages. Écoutons le témoignage de Samira. Le projet nous a permis de travailler sur un cours sur l'évaluation des apprentissages. Euh, le cours a plusieurs sections, presque 4 ou 5 chaque année. Et on voulait s'assurer qu'il y ait un élément d'équité à tous les étudiants. 
Et le projet, les fonds de ce projet nous ont permis l'été dernier de calibrer ce cours de façon à ce qu'on fasse du Kung Chichin et que tous les étudiants, en travaillant en équipe, ils reçoivent le même matériel, ils reçoivent le même, le même enseignement, les mêmes ressources, ils sont formés de la même façon. Et il nous a aidé vraiment à contribuer à mieux comprendre et à mieux rendre le cours plus équitable à tous les étudiants pour qu'ils répondent tous aux mêmes euh, résultats d'apprentissage. Merci. Tous ces projets de collaboration avec le milieu scolaire ont permis de mieux sensibiliser nos étudiants à la réalité des écoles et d'augmenter leurs chances de succès durant les stages. And our final video for today is from Edmonton Public, and it's about their homegrown teachers teaching as a career pathway toolkit. In 2019, a proposal was made under the initiative of recruiting and retaining homegrown French teachers in response to a shortage of French teachers across Canada. The proposal was to create a Teaching as a Career Pathway Toolkit to provide information and support for secondary and university students in Alberta to consider pursuing a career as a French teacher. Key partners for the project include Edmonton Public Schools, Canadian Parents for French, and Alliance Francaise. Concept development began by engaging teachers, parents, students and partners to share what they love about teaching and learning French and what they would like to see featured in the toolkit. With the feedback gathered, the concept of embarking on a personal language journey inspired the heart of the project and the tagline, Be a French teacher, c'est ta route. The website evokes the feel of an Alberta journey with headings designed to resemble Alberta road signs. The Spark invites the audience into the life of a French teacher with testimonials and an interactive quiz to answer the question, could I be a French teacher? The community has links for students to learn more about the many exchange opportunities on offer, as well as links that celebrate the vibrant Alberta Francophone community. The journey highlights the three main proficiency pathways, resources for French language advocacy, links to all the post-secondary programs to pursue a French-focused education degree, proficiency assessments, and career planning tools. The support is a one-stop shop for all bursaries and scholarships available to French language students. The About page offers further information on the project and its partners. A unique and special part of the project was the filming and producing of videos that showcase the personal journeys of French teachers and students in our community. Aspiring and practicing teachers shared their love of teaching and learning in filmed testimonials. Footage was used to create a video series housed both on the website and on an accompanying YouTube channel. To promote the project, take-home bookmarks and posters were delivered to all secondary schools with French programming and to three university campuses in Edmonton, as well as Campus Saint-Jean, satellite sites and partner organizations. Feedback from teachers, students and stakeholders has been incredibly positive and appreciative of the project in its scope and impact. Students, teachers, administrators, career counselors, parents and community stakeholders now have a go-to resource to support the pursuit of becoming a French teacher, to advocate for French language learning and to celebrate Francophone culture in our community. The website has had thousands of event counts since it was launched in early April and user numbers continue to grow. The site has been shared and promoted on a national level by Canadian Parents for French, Casalt, and the many organizations featured on the website. We are encouraged that with our continual promotion in secondary classrooms and beyond, that more French-speaking students will enroll in education-focused university programs and that the impact will be seen for years to come.
And that was the last of our video presentations. We will now open the floor to any questions you may have uh, for any of the project recipients. And Julie, I'm gonna ask for your help identifying any <laughs> raised hands. Unfortunately, I can't see everybody's pictures. Sure, and I think um, if you just wanna unmute yourself, uh, go ahead. We just wanna, we kinda wanna keep this sort of open to um, discussion. Um, I also can't see, oh, there we go. That's better. Now I can see everybody. Or comments, <laughs> questions or comments about the videos. Shelly. Is the Be a French Teacher C'est Ta Route, is that disponible? Is that available to us? Or how would I know if that came to our two high schools with French immersion programs here in Foothills? That is available now, it's live. And maybe Marnie, do you wanna talk a little bit about, um, about the project and the availability? Um, yeah, so as far as I know, it should just be, um, it should just be available through the link that was provided uh, because it's a, a site. So let me just pull it off and I'll pop it in the chat for you. And then I saw Patricia and then Lise, I think had a question. So we'll go with Patricia first. Hi, this is a question for either Campus Saint-Jean or, or uh, Workland. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, in relation to the after ed degrees, because um, there's some other after ed degrees. And so both of these are obviously specializing to offer for French. And is there any transfer credit taken from any other programs in the province that have after ed degrees? I don't understand the question. Can you repeat a little bit differently? Sorry. So, so there were, were there were two after ed degrees that were kind of talked about here, and I was just saying there are some other programs or other uh, post secondaries that offer after ed in the province. And my question was, if a person is engaged in those any of those other after ed programs and wants to go to a French stream after ed what's, what would that look, what does that maybe look like? Are there transfer uh, credit, tr constant, transfer of credit agreements in place for any of that? So, um, so for Workland, uh, what we have is that if their degree is uh, from another place, it certainly um, is applicable. We have quite a prescribed program for after degrees. So for our four-year degrees and our five-year degrees, there's opportunities for transfer credits, but it would be on approval of the uh, associate dean um, to come into our after degree because it's a two-year program and it's quite prescriptive. And um, I would say for Campus Saint-Jean, Patricia, um, the after degree is quite prescriptive, you know, it, and for us, it has 66 credits. So uh, even more than two years has got two extra courses. Um, so are you talking about transferring from someone who started an after degree and then going to Campus Saint-Jean or someone who's done a degree somewhere else and coming to Campus Saint-Jean? No, um, specifically someone who is possibly who is already in an after ed degree stream but hasn't finished it. OK, so it, it is complicated. I think I would not. Uh, dare say that it's a simple uh, carry over. I think they would have to apply and then get their uh, their the records uh, like uh, assessed. Uh, but there are no, especially for just a two year program, it's rare actually that students transfer in a two year program. In a four year program, we see that where students will do two years in arts, two years in science, and then come to education. And then they it ends up often turning into a five year program where they've already got two years of science and arts, and then they finish with an, an, an ed degree. So, um, but in a case of transferring after, let's say one year of a after degree somewhere else and then coming to compensation, I, they would just have to apply and then get as their, their record assessed. I won't talk for University of Calgary, but I bet you it's similar. Okay, Lise, did you wanna ask your question? I didn't have a question. I was just clapping. It was the, the clapping hand. So I just wanted to say, Thank you and great job everyone on those wonderful presentations and videos. Yeah. 
Okay, so one thing that we talked about and I heard a lot here is I heard, you know, um, French teachers be a French teacher. And I know within the public, I've talked to Tanya already about this, but, and, and, and I hear it everywhere. But what we're trying to create is teachers that can teach in French. Because we, we, we need math teachers and we need science teachers. We, I hear a lot of French teachers. And so I know in our Francophone schools, we, we're looking for a social studies teacher and, and physics teachers. And, and it's the same in immersion. I, I work with CBE right now. And you know they're like, wow, we love the idea of the after degree. If we can have science students come into it, then we get these teachers that can teach in French. So. Um, I, I don't know, I think that's something we should push a little more, even in our promotion, um, is that you can teach in French. You don't have to be a French teacher. So sometimes I, sometimes I find we, we push a lot the French fact, as opposed to be a teacher who speaks French, and then you can teach whatever you want. You can teach half in French, half in English. God, for, for five years of my career, I taught in three different languages, Spanish, French, and English. And Sometimes I walked in my classroom and wasn't sure what language to speak anymore. So that got a little dizzy, but dizzy, but um, you know, I survived it. <laughs> I agree with this. <clears throat> I agree with this, Pierre. Um, but I think there's a pedagogy also for teaching math in French. So that's the piece also that we need to uh, make sure. So our program is more bilingual because we have like math classes in English, but the students also have the French pedagogy. So, so yes, French teachers, but French uh, math teachers, uh, math in French version anyway, teaching math, teaching science, teaching social studies. So I agree with you. Any other questions about the videos before we move on to the breakout rooms? Yeah. J'ai une autre question, désolé. Euh, Ma, euh, Anne-Marie, oui, Anne-Marie. Oh, désolé, t'as bougé. Tu étais à droite, maintenant tu es à gauche dans mon écran. <laughs> tu es allé dans une autre salle. Euh, Anne-Marie, uh, you know, you said 40% of students uh, uh, quit, like the teaching profession, um, just as a, for my own information, where did you get that statistics and who did this research? I've heard that it was a large number, that for years we've talked about this. I've, as a principal, I've lost young teachers and I've done, you know, I think we're guilty. We give them the worst schedule and then they're new and then we, we wonder why they don't want to teach anymore. But anyway, we, I think we have a whole element of responsibility there. But where, where did that, stick? like who did that research? I, I'd love to, to be able to quote it, I guess. Um, I don't know, Pierre, because I didn't, I was not here when the, this project was started, but I can um, try to ask the person who started the project and then I'll get back to you. Merci Anne-Marie. And if anybody has that information or even any kind of statistics on that, please share it because I think even for two for us post-secondary, but I mean for everybody, it's it'd be it's an important factor. How do maybe we need to prepare them better and maybe we need to talk to our school boards and approach this very differently. Yeah, yeah it's it's Michael Tryon here. Um, the statistic that's being used by the Canadian Teachers Federation and the Alberta Teachers Association says that we lose 40 to 50% of our young teachers within the first three to five years. So that's coming from the teachers federations and the teachers association. To be more specific, I'd probably get hold of Monique Gravel at ATA and she'd be able to uh, go from there. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Michael. That's excellent. Um, I think that we will have some more opportunity for questions at the end, but in um, just being conscious of time, I think we'll continue on. Um, I'm sure we could do the, like a whole day webinar and still have things to talk about. I think so. This is a very interesting and very important topic. Um, so let's let's get moving on. So give me a second to share my screen again. Can you see the presentation okay? Perfect. So we're gonna shift gears now and discuss the current situation related to teacher recruitment and retention. As we mentioned earlier, a lot has changed since December, 2018, and we'd like to provide an opportunity for that discussion. So we will now divide you into breakout rooms where you will have about 20 minutes to discuss a few questions. Um, a reminder to refer to the guiding question handout for these questions that was circulated yesterday. 
um, and a review of the five priority areas identified back in December 2018. So the questions that you will be asked to discuss amongst yourselves are, are the five priorities identified in December 2018 still relevant? Why or why not? And has the pandemic changed any of these priorities? And um, just a quick housekeeping note, there's no worries about clicking any buttons to move yourselves into the groups or out. Uh, Julie is going to take care of all of that for you. Um, and just a reminder again that we're recording the session today, but the OLAP or but the breakout room conversations will not be recorded. I will ask that you please identify a spokesperson for your group that will share the main points discussed in your breakout room with everyone once we come back together into the main room. And just a reminder again, an Alberta education rep will be in your group taking notes so that we don't miss anything. And I think that we've all done the uh, quick change of our name to identify where we are from. If you haven't, just a reminder to click on the three buttons or the three dot button uh, on your picture and quickly type in after your name where you are from. And Julie will now move us all into our groups. Happy discussing. So I'm now gonna call on each group to provide us a really quick overview of um, some of the items that you discussed or the highlights of your discussion, I guess. Um, so who is the spokesperson for group one? I think that was gonna be Julia. Okay, I was like, I didn't actually see which room I went into, so <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, hi, I'm Julia Dress from High Prairie School Division and Marnie nominated me, thanks Marnie. <laughs> um, so we had a few different conversations. Uh, one of the key conversations was around impact of pandemic on um, on our uh, on the registration uh, in immersion programs, and the challenges of um, reintegrating and transitioning our students. Secondly, we talked about the challenges for rural boards in recruitment, and that. Um, international recruitment is not really something that's even viable for us for multiple reasons, one of which being um, international um, candidates usually want to be closer to a city where they can access communities or airports. Um, and so homegrown and the opportunities that are being offered across the province by the Workland School and Campus Saint-Jean are extremely important to us. The supply and demand. Um, are also, a, are also a piece. And even when we're back to the pandemic piece, the, the uh, reduction in numbers from French immersion from people not being able to support it at home, despite some of the different things put in place, um, has meant that there's a, um, different positions also being lost. Um, some opportunities were discussed uh, of places where um, the, the universities can, can offer some supports. Um, uh, in, for rural communities, as well as um, some different uh, opportunities for cohorts to get together and, and have some conversations for community of practice. The conversation about the lack of distance learning resources with ADLC um, closing for French immersion is, um, and the transition of those ADLC resources not being firmed up yet and how that's being accessed is a challenge as well as um, the conversations in the media around the draft curriculum and how that is impacting the um, attraction um, of out of province people to our province. Anything I missed? Excellent, thank you, Julia. And group two, who is your spokesperson? I think that's me. <laughs> um, so we also, just to add to what Julia said, uh, in terms of international teachers, we've also had there, we spoke a bit about credentialing and the complex complexity of credentialing transfer of credits. Uh, and we also spoke about, sometimes we've had varied success in our school boards with teachers with international backgrounds and 
um, it, that's also posed some challenges. In terms of homegrown teachers, we got stuck on uh, target language proficiency and the necessity to, to speak in a French immersion or to work in a French immersion program, you do need an elevated level of target language proficiency. Um, and so we spoke a bit about, is there a benchmark? Like does every school board have a benchmark for um, a level of French and is there a possibility of maybe standardizing that across the province to ensure that all of our schools have access to candidates who have kind of the same um, bagage de compétence linguistique, um, I don't, whatever that is in English and um, yeah, I think that's about it we got. And in terms of the pandemic, I don't think we really felt that we were um, too negatively affected. Um, both Patricia and I didn't feel that that actually compromised us too much. Thank you, Sarah. And moving on to group three, I know that that was Anne-Marie is our spokesperson. Thank you. So a lot of the same uh, topics of discussion um, when we talked about the language level of a new teacher, um, it was mentioned that it was suffering um, and that there was more um, practice needed in a French setting. Um, so that was really a concern for some uh, French immersion um, programs. Um, we talked about um, international recruitment, but also coming from other provinces in um, needing the cultural and linguistic adaptation. And I think it goes back to um, the community of practice and all the mentorship uh, that needs to occur, uh, whether it's for French immersion or francophone uh, setting. Um, it's a different re reality when they come here and some adapt well, and for some it's difficult. So there has to be uh, some resources to, uh, to help teachers that way. Um, Homegrown teachers, we talked also about the rural areas and the difficulty in uh, uh, recruiting and uh, uh, re the retention of teachers in rural areas. Um, so homegrown, homegrown teachers are probably, is probably one of the solution uh, or one of the thing that would help in that. Talking about the increased training spaces, um, it, it's kind of ironic, uh, Pierre, when the Campus Saint-Jean is, it, it's got those satellite programs. They're also very challenging financial times, and it is really a worry uh, about the, uh, the the capacity of Campus Saint Jean to uh, to to have to train new teachers, uh, whether it's for the francophone or for the uh, immersion or the French second language. So that is that is a worry. Um, the effect of the pandemic. We talked about the fact that. Um, for professional development, it actually had a positive impact um, because uh, online, uh, it's much easier for teachers to access some really good PD and the different organizations that are offering PD have adapted really well to offer some high, high quality um, PD online, um, especially for people in a more isolated setting, uh, allows them um, much easier access to, uh, to good PD and to other people. So that's probably one thing to remember from the pandemic and carry forward. Um, uh, someone was talking about um, um, credential um, and we talked about the certification being different, different in all the provinces. So we're not even talking overseas, even from different provinces, it's difficult. So could we have something that would be uh, the same, uh, that you could move from province to province in Canada and be able to teach? Uh, without having to jump through too many hoops. Um, the other one was um, talking about some students from other provinces that might be interested in coming uh, to study here, and then they could say, stay and teach, but the university transfers between university and, uh, universities and provinces, again, is difficult. So, And we finished with the, uh, the rural areas, uh, so that's been talked before. So, so that's basically the, uh, what our group discussed. Thank you. Um, and so with that, I think, why don't we take a quick five minute break, uh, get ourselves resituated and uh, we will come right back. And I'm actually gonna turn on a handy dandy little timer that Julie found for me. 
Um, so we'll all know when we're supposed to be back in this room. So quick five minute break and we'll see you shortly. Thanks everybody. Just heard about. So moving forward, we're going to pull together all the information we just heard about the current situation and discuss how we might move forward. First, I'd like to hone in on the topic of international recruitment. Um, as part of the modernization of the Official Languages Act, the federal government is aiming to increase the Francophone population in Canada by 4.4% by 2023. In our conversations from 2018, and, and again discussed briefly today, the international recruitment of teachers was one of the priority areas. If this remains a priority area, and we were to partner with the federal government on their Francophone immigration initiative, we'd like to hear from you about your thoughts on how it could work. As we've already mentioned, we have some issues regarding cultural um, education and certification requirements, um, but we've included this issue um, in the next round of discussion questions. So once again, you're going to be divided into new breakout rooms, I believe, to discuss the following questions, as well as the last section of questions on your handout. Um, and this is going to assist us in solidifying each stage of the process for when an applicant expresses interest in teaching in Alberta to their classification and class placement. So have you seen successful efforts to recruit international teachers? Have you noticed any barriers to Alberta recruiting international teachers? What is needed following the arrival of an applicant into Alberta? How can we advertise teaching in Alberta to an international audience? And how might Francophone teacher recruitment in Alberta be part of the Federal Francophone Immigration Initiative? So I think that Julie is going, actually, before we go into our breakouts, these are the next questions that we're also going to ask you to discuss. Um, and part of these discussions are going to help us build a strategic framework to determine how we're gonna prioritize funding applications to the federal government and move forward with internal decisions. So in your discussion or breakout rooms, could you also discuss a little bit priority areas um, moving forward and your reasoning for these priority areas? So Julie will now break us out into our rooms and I know that it's a little bit of a departure from what we had planned, so it's a little bit not as streamlined, but again, lots of focus around international recruitment um, and what other than international recruitment, what are the newer emerging priorities that we should be focusing on moving forward? Okay, group one, who is our spokesperson? That was the group with Patricia, Anne-Marie. Okay, that's me again then. <laughs> My group numbers. Hi, I got elected again. So um, I'm Julie Jeffs from High Prairie School Division, and uh, we, we cycled through the international conversation. We talked about one of the bigger challenges is the cultural disconne uh, disconnection and the importance of some sort of way of bridging that um, the experiences of the international teachers from their home uh, childhood education to the expectations in Canada and um, and having that, that training or that transition uh, is really important to the success. Uh, we talked about for the international students also the importance of all the websites being in French. So um, the divisional websites and as well as Alberta Ed's website and the, um, the uh, teacher quality standard, all those different pieces, the importance of all that being, being bilingual makes a big difference. Um, we talked a little bit about with the international, um, the rural areas really struggle. Um, to, and so we then spun back onto the um, homegrown and the importance of a homegrown programming um, because that's, that's, our best, that's our best bet. So from there, we talked about the importance of the language um, standards and we talked about whether it'd be better to have a provincial tool or to use the DELF. We talked about the opportunities through the FLRC to be a satellite, uh, the FLRC out of Grand Prairie to be a satellite DELF center as Foothills is and others are um, so that the, we can be continuing to use that tool as a possibility. 
Um, we did talk about some of the challenges with the DELF in the in the, the vocabulary, but all the resources available um, through the different online whatever programs. We talked about the um, attrition uh, from our immersion and FSL programs as we move into high school and the importance of figuring out some way to do some uh, synchronous, asynchronous, hybrid programming across the province to offer something for these students so that we don't lose our immersion kids at grade 10 and our FSL kids at grade 10 when we have gaps in availability of teachers. We talked about what some of the school divisions are doing to try and do some some um, virtual some some shared programming across the schools in their division. We're trying an FSL 10 20 30 um, St. Paul. We've got some other boards doing similar where we're trying to do something. But the again, the pedagogy for the virtual alongside the complications of having someone on site who can work with the students on site um, is expensive. And then we came back to the homegrown and what we can do to make sure we have spaces. And then we didn't touch on this, but this came to my mind as we were closing, which is the, how do we make it a really appealing job? How do we really promote that and say, you wanna be a French second language or a French immersion teacher? Like this is a great job and this is why. So that side's another piece. Thank you. Um, and Julia, on that last note, I'm gonna put in another plug for the Edmonton Public's uh, toolkit. Um, for the that the one that um, Marnie put in at the end? Yes. Okay, thank you. There we go. Thank you, Pierre. <laughs> okay, and moving on to uh, group number two. Who is our spokesperson? This was the one with Christy and Marnie and Sylvie. <laughs> Uh, that was great. Uh, so uh, we talked, um, I think, at length about what it just starting off what it means to be francophone, um, and uh, had a discussion of, um, you know, kind of the the wording that government uses uh, that is obviously built around um, history and laws and that sort of thing, and then kind of the reality in Alberta and how people identify themselves as they work with uh, students in schools, uh, and how that. Um, there might be a bit of a disconnect between um, who considers themselves to be francophone, uh, and we know that um, obviously um, the federal government has a way of defining that, um, but that perhaps that definition uh, needs to shift uh, as times change. Um, we also talked a little bit about the fact that we, I don't know if any of us do actively recruit internationally um, at this point, uh, but didn't really get into that very, very much. But we did talk about the Common European Framework uh, and the fact that um, as a pedagogical tool, uh, it has been valued uh, by the districts represented. And I, um, we also talked about the lack of um, language framework uh, evident in new curriculum. And then uh, using that as kind of a launch, we talked about uh, you know, different difficulties that might be on the horizon for attracting uh, educators to Alberta. I think that is the gist. Anybody else from my group would like to add? Did I miss anything? Oof, I didn't even take notes. Perfect. Not bad, thank you. <laughs> um, and moving on to group three. Do we have a spokesperson from group yeah, three? I can volunteer since I volunteered Sarah last time. So I think it'd be just fair. <laughs> I was totally you. waiting for her to volunteer me. I think um, you volunteered me, Pierre. So, you know, it's up to you. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think something that was said is that, uh, you know, we talked about many things. First of all, we differentiate international recruitment, immigrant recruitment and training, and, you know, to differentiate it to, it's, uh, we talked about the, the fact that Alberta is one of the few provinces that does not have a minimum standard uh, for the quality of language for French immersion teachers. And that is becoming a little problematic. The other point that was raised is that if we start having a standard, we're gonna have less teachers and we're in a shortage. So it's that catch 22 where um, we also address the issue that because our the le level of language for the teachers in the classroom is not always at the upper level. The students that graduate don't feel that their language is at a high level and then are not willing to go and study in French, be it at Campus Saint-Jean, Workland, anywhere, um, to, um, 
to then become a French teacher or a teacher in French. So they, they, many of them will go into education, but never actually teach an immersion program, which is a huge lost resource for all of us. I think we're all in the same boat here. So uh, I know even the Franklin schools are affected by that because there are some great teachers that are from the immersion programs that are now teachers, administrators in, in the Francophone system as well. So it, it's becoming, you know, it's, it's, um, it's good for everybody, really. Um, another point, um, yeah, uh, making sure we have support for anybody that has not gone through the Alberta school system, even that out of province, out of country. So coming directly international recruitment, but even training uh, people that have, that have immigrated to Canada, then making sure they have a good knowledge of the uh, Alberta school system and um, making sure they have the literacy tools to understand the second language, teaching in a second language environment. And um, I think that's, those are the biggest things, I think. So, Michael, anything else? Um. Yeah, you said the minimum standards for the language, but it's also minimum standards for a French immersion program. We're one of the only jurisdictions in Canada that does not have a minimum standard for French immersion programming. And what I mean by that is in BC, for example, at every level, so kindergarten through grade 12, there are minimum program requirements, minimum program standards. How does that affect internationally? Well, when, a, when somebody international wants to come to Canada, they're going to look at the websites and they're going to go to the BC one and say, look, I can handle this. But Alberta, if you go to Westlock, uh, French immersion in high school is one pro one class if you're lucky. If you go to Edmonton, well, you need four classes per year. If you go to Calgary, well, it's only three. So how can you recruit somebody when you go one school board over and the standards change? So, um, you know, that that's that's a big thing. And I think also the focus, again, I'm a university facilitator with the, the international students, as Pierre said, they have significant challenges. The students in the classroom have challenges. So do the mentor teachers because they're really not familiar with the class, Canadian classroom and how to work in it. And so some supplemental training needs to be mandatory, whether they're doing an after degree, whether they're coming already with a recognized degree, whatever the case may be. And last but not least, if there's a federal initiative, we're stupid not to participate in it. We can take from it what we want, but if the federal government is willing to pay for it and fund it and do things, and we're paying a peanut's worth instead of the whole, you know, the, the whole bushel, we're paying for one peanut, then it's worth our time and our well to participate. Thanks, Pierre. Thank you, Michael. Well, great discussions, um, great information put forward. Hopefully you have learned something about something that's happening somewhere in the rest of the province that might be able to help your school division, your association. Um, this is definitely not the last conversation that we are gonna have on this issue. It's very important. Um, and I have heard everything that has been said about what the Department of Education can be doing to support. Um, and we will take that back and move it forward to see what can be done. Um, <clears throat> and so that actually brings us to the end of today's conversation. As I said, we will schedule another one. Our team is gonna go back, take everything that we've heard, um, and perhaps we'll have another what we heard uh, conversation, maybe in September or early in the fall to move this forward. Um, because again, so many great ideas, so many great things are happening but we still do have some challenges that hopefully we can work together um, to find solutions to and partner with, whether it's the federal government or another province or territory or an international um, organization or another country. Um, there are solutions out there. We just need to find it and adapt it to find a way to work for us. Um, so with that, I know that we're already over, so I do apologize for that, but. I will just open the floor to any last minute questions or comments that you would like to make before we close out today's session. Yes, Michael. Just real quick, and it's something that I shared with you. Um, any school board or any organization that's interested in submitting a, uh, a teacher recruitment and retention project, uh, we'd like to focus on rural. Uh, Canadian Parents for French would be more than willing to partner in it and uh, help with our resources. Thank you, Michael. 
And as we've heard uh, today, we've chatted a little bit about the importance of our rural school authorities um, and some of the extraordinary challenges that they're facing. Any other last comments or questions? Yes, Marnie. Um, I know that we had a lot of conversation about um, supporting across all of the different school divisions in different places through some kind of consistency and coherence around what we mean around language proficiency. And in order to have that consistency and that cohesion, we need a standard. And that standard does exist. It's the Common European Framework of Reference. Um, and the CEFR is not the DELF. The DELF is built off the CEFR. Um, the CEFR is used probably now in every province except Alberta. So it is the basis generally for curriculum assessment, pedagogy, and resource development. Um, and that coherence and clarity is, is there and ready for us to activate and use. There's a tremendous body of research behind it, as well as practical and applied experience with it. And for whatever reason, Alberta doesn't use it. So just putting it out there, the standard exists. We don't need to make the standard. The standard is there. Yes, Sarah. Uh, I think I'll just add to what Marnie said and say that the, I think the key to the success of our FI and FSL programs and kind of elevating them really lies in the collaboration and cohesion that we as partners all work together to do. When I see, you know, Michael's here, we've got Alberta Education, we've got universities. I think that we are all responsible for, I always say to the teachers in our program, nous sommes tous responsables pour le rendement de you know, de nos élèves en immersion. So we're all responsible for um, the success of our students in the program. And I think that this is a, I just thought it was a really great meeting to show that there is um, an opportunity for us to all collaborate together. Thank you, Sarah. Then with that, I will close our meeting today. And again, thank you all so very much for making yourself available and contributing to this very important conversation. Um, I say the exact same thing to my team. Um, students are our goal. Uh, what do we need to do to support our students? Um, and so that is our goal. And it sounds like that's something that we're all striving towards. So I look forward to continued conversations. Um, thank you again and take care everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>